Well, I want to thank Your Eminence. This is really great to be with you again. We love it, Governor. We can also agree on the need to stand up to anti-Catholic bias. And the great religious leaders here tonight give us all an example that we can follow. And we've got to come together, not only as a nation, but as a world community. Now, I'm not Catholic, I'm a Methodist, but one of the things that we share is the belief that in order to achieve salvation, we need both faith and good works. And you certainly don't need to be Catholic to be inspired by the humility and heart of the Holy Father, Pope Francis, or to embrace his message. his message about rejecting a mindset of hostility, his calls to reduce inequality, his warnings about climate change, his appeal that we build bridges, not walls. Now, as you may know, my running mate, Tim, is Catholic and went to Jesuit schools. And one of the things he and I have talked about is this idea from the Jesuits of the Magus, the more the better. Well, we need to get better at finding ways to disagree on matters of policy while agreeing on questions of decency and civility. How we talk to each other, treat each other, respect each other. Can you see what is happening, friends? The papal beast of Revelation 13 is in the ascendancy. The image of the papal beast is almost completely formed in America. The final events of prophecy are upon us, and yet the churches are silent. The churches are silent. If there is no more protest, how can there be a Protestant church? <laughs> Maybe we now we're all Catholics again. The protest is over. The protest is over. Revelation 13 tells us that America would form an image of the papacy in the U.S., that image would be a uniting of church and state, with the Catholic Church and fallen Protestant churches uniting to take control of government and dictate the consciences of the people. This, friends, is exactly what we are seeing happen today in America. And what did Donald Trump promise the church if he was elected president? Power. And I, I understand why, because the country is in a state, our country is not great either. The world is changing very fast, and so along comes someone and says, let's make our country great again. I can understand why people would buy that so easily. It plays on a, a place in people that is getting desperate. But that is the ploy, to feed into that desperation that is building within people. And that's exactly the kind of manipulation that it always does. Just look back at history. History repeats itself. This is the same game with different players. Don't fall for it. You've been a part of the Faith Advisory <coughs> Council that was assembled together. Um, James Robinson had a part in that. A number of ministers, nationally known ministers, have been a part of that. What would you say that would be most interest to our Christian audience, especially the faith audience, that you've heard in those meetings, those phone calls, uh, that <coughs> gives you the most hope and what you're listening for, what was your ear tuned to that you've heard out of that that was the most encouraging thing as a Christian? If something were to really, really strike my heart, if God really showed me something that I felt like, <clears throat> and that the Lord would say, you deliver this, yeah, yeah. I have no doubt but what I could deliver it. Mm -hmm. And that was not true in presidents past. Mm -hmm. I am totally convinced that if the Lord were to say something to me, if mm -hmm. the Lord were to say mm -hmm. something to David, or if the Lord were to say something to Bishop that, that, that the president needs to hear, <coughs> I have yeah. no doubt yeah. that we could do it and do it quickly. Yes, sir. And have audience to say, thus saith the Lord, and, and he wouldn't just turn it over to an aide or something and just write it off. He would listen. And, and it would mean something to him. So now we have the likes of Kenneth Copeland, who is on Donald Trump's Faith Advisory Council. Can you believe it? The likes of Kenneth Copeland on the President's Faith Advisory Council. Seriously, you cannot make this stuff up. 
and Kenneth Copeland and co. know that they now have direct access to the President to deliver so-called messages from God. And what kind of messages are these going to be? Who is Kenneth Copeland and the rest of them in bed with now? Yes, the Pope. You cannot make this stuff up seriously. This is prophecy fulfilling. The image of the beast is coming together in America. We can also agree on the need to stand up to anti-Catholic bias. And the great religious leaders here tonight give us all an example that we can follow. And we've got to come together, not only as a nation, but as a world community. Now, I'm not Catholic, I'm a Methodist, but one of the things that we share is the belief that in order to achieve salvation, we need both faith and good works. And you certainly don't need to be Catholic to be inspired by the humility and heart of the Holy Father, Pope Francis, or to embrace his message. His message about rejecting a mindset of hostility, his calls to reduce inequality, his warnings about climate change, his appeal that we build bridges, not walls. God has warned us in Revelation that any unity with Babylon and the beast system will see us lost and cast into the lake of fire. So this is a message of love, not hate. Yet the world rejects the truth that is found in Jesus Christ, and we are told to unite with Babylon and the world for the sake of peace and safety. And this is Satan's plan, to unite the world against God's truth. The churches and world leaders preach a unity without truth and apart from the word of God. In the scriptures that we Jews and Christians and Muslims cherish, in the scriptures that we Jews and Christians and Muslims cherish. And what mindset has been created today? The leaders of both civil and religious powers have created this mindset in the world through the terrorism that they actually created themselves, that if you share God's truth and speak against the papal beast of Rome, or the fallen churches, or the state, then you are a terrorist. Can you see what's happening? We can also agree on the need to stand up to anti-Catholic bias. Well, I guess I'm in trouble then. The churches are wondering after the papal beast. The world is wondering after the papal beast, just as Revelation 13 foretold. Just look at the attendance of this yearly ecumenical meeting with the Pope. The Anglican Church, the World Baptist Church, the Eastern Orthodox Church, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the World Lutheran Church, Pentecostals, the Salvation Army, the World Evangelical Churches, the World Methodist Church. They are all taking part in this ecumenical movement and returning back to their mother, Babylon. And anyone who rises up against this unholy union, declaring the truth of God, will be persecuted. Persecution is coming. Persecution is coming, and yet the majority of God's professed remnant sleep and have not the Spirit of Christ to be able to stand in the time of trouble that is soon to break upon this world. Wake up, people. Please, wake up. <laughs>